One team from each league. We'll see the Chicago Cubs as they play against the Chicago White Sox. Coming your way on 2K Sports. It's a day game Tuesday afternoon. Hi, everybody. 2K Sports, Gary Thorne, John Cruck, and Steve Phillips. A game changer, Alex Rios. We're going to get to see if he can change this game today. U.S. Cellular Field on the south side in Chicago with the White Sox. Starting pitcher, John Danks. As he gets into this Cub lineup, Steve, what are we talking about strategy-wise? Well, the scouting report against this lineup is if you execute your pitches, hit your spots, keep the ball down on the zone, you can shut them down. And with a quality left-hander like this on the mound, he shouldn't have too much difficulty. This is how the Cubs offense will look, sponsored by Pepsi. Scouting pick, John, who are we uh, looking at today? Well, if this team is going to hit and run in this game today, look for Ryan Terrio to be the guy at bat when that situation occurs. He can handle the bat. He loves to hit behind runners. And he does still hit for a pretty good average for a guy that gives himself up unselfishly for his team. It's Soriano at the plate. He prepares to lead off this game. Getting set. Look at the first pitch. Number 12, Alfonso Soriano. Danks gets set and delivers. Played by Canerco. He's out at first base. Nice play on the cover. Uh, that's a well-executed play right there, Gary. Hustled over, got to first base, touched the bag. Thought he might have had a strike out there, but he's involved in the out anyway. And it's Ryan Terrio in the box now. A 2009, a disappointing season for Cubs fans. A very loyal fan base finishing in second place is not what they were looking for, but they did have injuries and some chemistry issues on the team that they're going to have to address moving forward. As he retreats back for it and gets the out. Chicago Cubs, the 09 season, uh, they were plagued by injuries, but frustrating in that their performance, ups and downs, ups and downs, never got on any kind of consistency. Yeah, they can never get on a roll, and I think the fact that they tried Milton Bradley, they signed him to a three-year deal, they thought he'd be that switch here in the middle of the lineup to split up Derek Lee and Aramis Ramirez. It didn't work out for him. And subsequently, not blaming Milton Bradley, but their offense struggled mightily because of the middle of their lineup. If they're going to compete, they're going to have to have great years from the middle of their lineup. Lee watches it for a strike. Some guys really like the low fastball. In this situation, though, he ends up taking the pitch. There's a swing and a line drive. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. Only five pitches to get out of that inning. That'll rest your arm. And the White Sox, their first chance has come. And a Randy Wells gets ready to throw. He'll be the starter for Chicago. Johnny gets going here against these White Sox bats. What are you expecting? Well, versatility is the best way you can describe Randy Wells. Yes, he had a lot of starts in 2009, but he can also pitch in the bullpen. The great thing about it is it doesn't matter where he pitches, and he has the ability and the arsenal to strike people out. There's no more valuable player that you can have than a guy who's unselfish that'll pitch either start or relieve. Here's the 0-1 pitch by Wells. Strike two. Pierre now has got to be careful, but a good punch hitter. Well, just an unbelievably poor swing against that changeup right there. No wonder he missed it. And the leadoff fan of this ball game's on board. Let's see if they get it started early. Lineup for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pepsi. Thoughts, John? Anybody stand up? Well, you take a look at Alexi Ramirez. He's one of the more exciting players in baseball. Finally got moved to his more natural position shortstop. And I tell you what, this is a guy that can excite you in a lot of ways. He can hit for power. He can hit for average. And he's not a big guy, but I tell you what, he can generate some power in that frame. And Beckham's in the box. No one out and a runner on first. Wells with the pitch. Fastball just misses. 1-0. Well, he's one of those pitchers that doesn't like to fall behind. And when he does, he wants to come right back in with that fastball. So you got to be ready for it. Pauses and now the 1-0. That one swung on and missed by Gordon Beckham. And that strike evens it up. But Gary, the numbers seem to indicate he likes to go fastball on a 1-1 count trying to get back ahead again. A line drive towards short. That should be a base hit. 
here's how the Cubs stack up defensively. Steve, keeping an eye on anyone? Number 51. Kosuke Fukudome is a guy that played a lot of center field in his career. Whether he's in center field or he's in the corners, he can make plays. He's not afraid of the wall. He's willing to go up and make the tough catch. Here's Alex Rios now, RBI champs. Well, they're going to be keeping an eye on Pierre right now, Gary. And Rios will take it down low for a ball. Here's Wells with a 1-0 pitch. Swung on by Rios, strike one. Well, you have to be ready for something hard, and this guy wasn't anticipating it. That's why he was late on that two-seam fastball. Good time to call for that changeup, one and two. And he swings and hits this one foul. This one's grounded hard up the middle. That's one out. And the double play, they got them both. But Gary, get a chance to look at this double play and the replay. And this is an outstanding effort to make the catch, get to the bag, and make the throw. That's a rally killer. And that's going to deny the chance at a big inning here. Carlos Quinton at the plate with two away. Wells with the pitch. Fastball in there, 0 and 1. Well, he couldn't have asked for a better pitch. He likes the ball down the middle like every hitter, and he got a fastball. You got to swing the bat. He swings and nails a liner. And in there, the White Sox will score. Well, a big RBI single right there. And I tell you, anytime you can put that first run on the board, the momentum is in your favor. And here's Martin. And uh, Steve, they've got the edge right now. They're getting some big runs at an important part of the game. Trying to salt it away early. Well, that's a good piece of hitting right there to take an early lead in this game. Swing and a rocket towards short. Throws to first side is retired. Nice way to get things started in this one. The White Sox have the lead one to nothing. Lead off hitter Aramis Ramirez. Third base, number 16, Aramis Ramirez. Hot shot towards the hole. And that brings up Marlon Byrd. By the pitcher makes a great pitch right here. Had him way out in front of this ball, but he gets just enough a piece of it to put it in play. And with that speed, he just beats it out. Danks gets set and delivers. Oh. And that runs high, 1-0. You're playing with fire right there. Hanging the breaking ball up in the zone. That's the way you can get hurt. Ready with a 1-0. Swing and a miss. Marlon Bird can't make contact, and that will even up the count. Career numbers for him, 277 off the white side. A liner headed for the hole. And Tian with the catch. And that will hold him at first. Designated hitter, number six. And hot Michael power batting. Power. What a difference a year makes. In 2008, Chicago produced two first place teams. In 2009, a year of disappointment both on the north and south side as the Cubs and White Sox struggled. Danks gets him to swing, a miss for a strike. You know, with the uh, Cubs and White Sox, it was the uh, White Sox winning 4 2 in the uh, regular season series. They outscored the Cubs 32 19 in those Hold games. On. Man, it doesn't take a genius to figure out why the Cubs lost this series. Eight averaging eight runs a game. The Chicago White Sox was a reason why they handed the Chicago Cubs a, a two and four record. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. This one towards Pierre. And he gets over and pulls it in for the out. Coming to back for the Chicago Cubs. Center fielder, number one. 
And it's Kosuke Fugadomi at the plate. Two outs and a man on first. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. Well, that hanging slider, it just spins like a helicopter up there. You've got to wail on it when he makes a mistake like that. A swing line to left center. And that's a base hit. Fukudomi on board. And he's safe in there at first. The Cubs in a nice position to capitalize. Giovanni Soto. Nice piece of hitting right there. He manages to drive that high 0-1 pitch for a base hit. Good patience, good pitch recognition. Sure looked like the hitter decided he wasn't going to get behind 0-2. He was going to wail. Uh, he was aggressive, no question about it. Got a pitch he could handle and took advantage. Strike one to Soto. Danks gets set and delivers. That's it foul by Soto. Slider swung on and missed. Struck him out. That's going to retire the side. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. The shutout continues in Chicago. A glimpse of the sun here and there darting around through the clouds. Some shadows coming on the field right now. Paul Konerko to lead it off. That's it foul by Konerko. Here's the 0-1 pitch by Wells. Here it comes. Hit hard to second. And Konerko retired. Number 12 going to be Przinski. Well, one area the Chicago White Sox are looking to see some improvement over 2009 is, is their team defense has got to get better. Nobody on base, one away. Swing and a miss, and he's behind that pitch. 0-1. Now, the White Sox defensively, 113 errors, second worst in the American League. You are not going to win baseball games when you're giving up all those extra chances and outs. Well, no, not in that division and not in any division, especially in the American League, where the DH is, is so prevalent because the more at bats you let these good hitters get the top of the order, the middle of the order, you keep turning the lineup over by making errors, the more chance your pitchers are going to give up a lot of runs. And that's what happened to this Chicago White Sox team in 2009. Well, John, in addition to the defense, I mean, they were also last in hits in the American League and near the bottom in extra base hits as well. So, you know, they got multiple components of their team that just didn't perform well enough. Grounder, Lee, up with it now. And he'll step on first to retire the side. No runs, no hits, no one left on. White Sox one, the Cubs nothing. End of the order is going to try and kick it off offensively. Glad you're with us this afternoon. Some fans bundled up in their jackets. A little chilly. Jeff Baker. It's Baker at the plate. First pitch and he misses the fastball strike one. Well if you're going to get a good fastball you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. 
No balls, one strike. Here's Danks. Line drive. And it's through. That's a base hit. And that will bring up Alfonso Soriano. Well, a good piece of hitting right there. And anytime you get your first hitter of the inning on base, it could set up the potential for a big inning. Here's the pitch to Soriano. Curveball misses badly, 1-0. A 1 0 pitch. And it's fouled off. The pitch lined hard down the left field line. That'll put Soriano on first. Good offensive chance here. Shortstop number two. Well, most of the time when you throw a pitch that far up in the strike zone, you don't even expect the hitter to swing at it, much less put the bat on it. But the hitter got his bat on it, and he got that big hit. And Przinski calls for the pitch. There's a strike from Danks, now 0-1. The pitch line towards third and foul. foul. And another foul ball. But when a pitcher throws a pitch out there 0 oh, 2 you're expecting him to get a ground out or a strikeout. But this guy just reaches out puts it in play defensive swing to keep this thing going. Ball. Tried to get him to chase that curve. It's one and two. He's playing with fire right there. Hanging the breaking ball up in the zone. That's the way you can get hurt. Swung on. Line to right field. One away. And the runners will have to hold that first and second. Well, that's a big first out of this inning. Now let's see if he can come back and get out of this thing unscathed. Here is Derek Lee with a chance to do some damage. Well, Derek Lee finally picked up the power numbers that were missing the last couple of years for the Chicago Cubs. He had that wrist injury, subsequently had surgery on it. The power numbers were down, but in 2009, the 35 home runs, 111 RBIs, seems like Derek Lee is back. And Lee will watch that one up high. If the Cubs are going to make that run that their fans have been waiting for for the last few years, Lee is going to have to have won a complete season on the field. Here's a swing and a broken bad line drive. That ball gets down, could tie it up. A run comes home. Boy, the Cubs are riding it along right now. They're making it happen. A productive hit right there. Let's see the impact on our Pepsi WPA graph. Now pitcher making a mistake right here, leaving it right over the heart of the plate. He squares it up, drives it. Good contact at the plate to drive in a run. Most of those kind of pitches are going to get hit. That's an RBI knock. And here's Aramis Ramirez. What a great job by this lineup. They have really put the production on here. Well, they bounce right back and tie this baby up with that one, Gary. First pitch was a strike. 0-1 now. Well, that's important early in the ball game. You want to make this into a seesaw battle. That's what they've done. Now, you're going to be all right with a seesaw battle. Sometimes that makes you nauseous. You're going to feel okay? That's right. And he is safe at first. He's on board. And that will score the run time broken. They've got the lead. Boy, this lineup, they are hot right now. The chances, they are productive. Oh, he likes that ball up in the zone. He can see it well. He just pounds it for a base hit and driving in a run. And this is called manufacturing runs the old-fashioned way. Well, there's so many different ways to do it. Lump the base hits together. First pitch on the way. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. That's two gone. At the plate for the Chicago Cubs, designated hitter, number six. And hot power batting. Hot power. 
Two men on and two men out. Fouled away. Now 0-2, Dax with some pitches to play with. This pitcher being very aggressive throwing strikes, I think he's going to try to get on the chase. Swung on, liner to right. And another one. It's contagious. And here's Lee heading home. He throws. And Lee comes in. Well, this separates the men from the boys at the plate. 0-2 count coming up with a big base hit. You got to keep battling, and that's what he did, even though that pitch was away. Kuske will get the RBI chance. Well, they definitely got a rhythm going right now, each player feeding off the other. Well, you have to credit this lineup, Gary. Some quality at bats right now and taking advantage of the opportunities, and now they have a lead. Here's the first pitch to Fukudomi. Danks gets him to swing and miss for a strike. And it may be early going. They've got a chance though, to maybe put this ball game away and put a little defeatism on the other side. Well, what I really like is... There's a swing towards the hole. And he throws on to first. That'll retire the side. A strike for five base hits in this inning and three runs up. Cubs jump ahead in this one. And it's Mark Kotze in the box now. Designated hitter. Number 30, Mark Kotze. Put something off, and it swung on and missed. 0 and 1. Matchup 282 lifetime against the Cubs. And it's 0 and 2. Kotze just trying to punch one here. He likes to try to make contact 0 2 and not get struck out, so that means you can't throw anything too close to the plate right here. Swing and a miss. That's a changeup. Down on strikes 1 0. Number Gary, let's check out this changeup in K Camp. It's down in the zone, but it's definitely a hittable pitch. Looks like the pitcher just caught him looking for something else, and it threw off his timing. Outstanding work right there, John. And uh, for the rest of the lineup, maybe they'll be second-guessing the next time around when they face him, especially with two strikes. Good pitch as he's late on that one. 0-1. Well, Randy Wells came out of nowhere in 2009 for the Chicago Cubs to establish himself as one of their better pitchers in the rotation. 12 big wins, an ERA of just over three. Pretty solid year for the young man. Certainly, Randy Wells didn't have a background uh, that would indicate he was going to have the kind of 09 season he did. A 38th round pick and a former catcher turned pitcher. Yeah, well, that's the thing. It takes those guys who change positions, especially going from an everyday player to a pitcher, to really establish themselves and get that consistency they need. The thing you notice about him is he doesn't walk a lot of guys. He doesn't strike out a lot of guys. Balls are being put in play, and he has to depend on his defense an awful lot. Base is empty with two outs. The first pitch. Hit in the air to left center. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. The so plate. that brings Alex Rios to the plate. Well, with two outs and no one on base, chances of scoring a run seem pretty scarce. But they get that two-out hit. Now they have some life. Wells with the pitch. Swinging and a miss. And he falls behind on the count 0-1. Well, a lot of times movement will fool a hitter, but it looked like right here the velocity on that pitch was what caused him to swing and miss and be late. Here's a swing and a line drive. And that gets the tying run on board. The runner's coming around second on his way to third. Up next, Carlos Quinton. That's a really good pitch, Steve, on an 0-2 offering to keep that down and in. That's a perfect pitcher's pitch. At this point, you've got to tip your hat to the batter. That's a solid job. Had an RBI single his last time to the plate. First pitch to Quinton. That one lofted in the air. This one to Soriano. And that's the third out. That'll do it. So, no runs, two hits, and they strand two. 
Up next, it'll be the Cup. And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Kruk, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. So Giovanni Soto will lead it off. First one to Soto. Here's the pitch. Line shot into center field. And he can't make the play. This could be trouble. There's the throw. No luck beating him to second. He is in there. So with nobody out, they get a runner at third. Well, I was already to mark this down on the card as a double. Put another line in there. Well, he didn't let up at all, Gary. Great effort on his part. Took a chance, but he made it. Amazing thing is he was able to do it standing up. Jeff Baker, he'll be looking to drive something in. He singled and it is lasted back. No outs, runner ready to come home from third. And the first pitch, liner towards the hole, and Conerco makes the catch, and that will not get that runner in from third. And here's Alfonso Soriano. Well, probably the most disappointing player for the Chicago Cubs in 2009 was Alfonso Soriano. He hit 20 home runs, but the fact is that he hits home runs, but he doesn't drive in any runs at all. And that's a problem. Only 55 RBIs with those 20 home runs. He's a not a high on base percentage, but he's a guy who likes to hit leadoff. So if you have a guy with not a good batting average, who doesn't get on base a lot, and he doesn't steal bases anymore, he's not doing you a lot of good from the leadoff spot. Now 0-2, Danks with some pitches to play with. Soriano fits into the mode of the free-swinging hitter. Uh, Alfonso Soriano rarely will let pitches go by. His on-base percentage not very high. Well, 40 walks and 118 strikeouts for a guy who predominantly hits leadoff. That's just not going to get it done. The nine stolen bases, to me, if he would accept the fact that he's a power hitter and he was hit in the middle of the lineup and he can swing for home runs, his home runs would go up. He did 30 home runs every year, but he would also drive in more runs because right now he's not producing enough home runs to be a worthy component of the Cubs' Whoa. offense. Dario lays off that up high. Lifetime record two for nine off John Danks. That catches the inside part of the plate one on one. But Gary these hitters are really now going to have to focus on his changeup. It is his best pitch and it is one of the best around. Now Przinsky sets up. Dario lays off that up high. You, know, you talk about how do you approach this changeup, Gary? Well, I'll tell you what, it's very, very difficult as a hitter because if you look changeup, then the fastball is going to beat you. But if you try to speed up for the fastball, then you're way out in front on the changeup. They pick up no runs on a hit, stranding a man at third base. The Cubs three, the White Sox one. And a chance to see one of the many expressions of Lou Pinello. He's been happy with his offense being able to provide the two run advantage here. And Mark T into bat. He'll lead it off here, bottom half of the fourth. Wells with the pitch. Line foul towards third. Swung on a fly ball down the left field line. And that'll set down Tian. That's one away. And here's Paul Canerco. The thing about Paul Canerco now at this stage in his career is he'll play a lot of games at first base, but when he needs a break, he can go to that DH role. He's not a guy that's going to steal any bases. He has hardly any speed left, but he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup and a leader in that clubhouse. Into the alleyway. He'll likely get extra bases on this. And he's in at second with a double, one out. Canerco certainly one of those valuable players, especially in the American League as a bench player, because he does give pitchers concern. You know if you make a mistake, he can drive in. Well, he really can, and that's the thing with him. And, you know, you remember back to that world. Hit sharply down the line, and it's caught by Ramirez. 
And he holds the runner at second. With a runner on second, Alexei Ramirez. He's 0 for 3 for his career off Wells. He delivers. Hit up the middle. So they pick up a hit but leave a man at second and fail to score. Cubs holding on to the lead. And for those of you catching up with us, hi. I'm Gary Thorne along with John Crook and Steve Phillips bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. It's Derek Lee to lead off. One for two in the ballgame.
Now Lee gets set. That one is hit well. Quentin's there. Stepping one the away. The they had to play perfectly. You pitch to your defense. They hit the right spot with the pitcher, and the outfielder was where he should be. They make the out. And uh, in the batter's box, it's Ramirez. Well, anytime you take a guy in the middle of your lineup out of the lineup and he only gets 306 at bats, you're going to struggle offensively, and that's exactly what the Chicago Cubs did. If Milton Bradley was having a great year, then he can make up for the loss for Ramos Ramirez. The fact is, neither one of those guys, because of games played and because of disappointing years, were the reason why the Cubs didn't get to the postseason. Strike two, and Ramirez will be a contact hitter now. Cubs recognizing the importance of Ramirez. They've signed into a five-year deal that will take him through 2012. Well, that's a great thing to do. Anytime you can lock up a corner guy who's a 30 homer guy and a 100 RBI guy, you can lock him in and you know you have him. Then you can build around and find the pieces you need to make your club a better club. Ramos Ramirez is a solid fixture in the middle of that lineup. Base is empty and two down. And the first pitch. Swung on, hit in the air to right center. And in there, base hit. He's going to try to stretch it. He wants to go to third. There's the throw. Stepping up to well, the, the one thing you never want to do is make the last out at third David base Peter. to end an Six. inning. But he was able Michael. to get in there with that great speed just in time. And Hoff Power batting. Drove in a run earlier in the game. Man on third, two outs. Now the first pitch. Here's a swing and a fly ball to right center. This one into the alleyway. Should be extra bases. And Bird comes in to score. He's headed for third. Boy, the Cubs are riding it along right now. They're making it happen. Center fielder, number one, Kosuke Fukudome. Well, that's ten hits right now in this ball game for him. And, you know, you're going to have to wonder how much longer the manager's going to stick with this guy. Kosuke will get the RBI chance. And, Steve, the offense continues to produce. They keep building on it. You know, after giving up runs like that, this is where the pitcher has to bow his neck and shut down the opponent. Damage control. This is where you uh, begin to wonder whether this game is going to start slipping away or not. Well, working on the old one count now. Well, Gary, to pick up what you were saying, you know, this game's not slipping away. They're still in it. But the pitcher has to make a pitch right now and get this guy out right now. Let's see if he can get it done. Throws to first in time. That's three down. So they score once on two hits, one man left. Cubs with a three-run lead. And if you're just joining our 2K Sports Major League Baseball broadcast with John Crook and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. And Mark Kotze up. Wells with the pitch. Swung on, grounded towards the hole. From his knees, got him. What a throw. Two fine plays and one right there, the dive and the throw. That's not an easy throw. When you're on your knees to be able to get that sort of strength on the ball, that's great arm strength. One out, faces him. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. Now swing and a shot towards second. That's the second out. And Beckham's in the box. Two for two in the game. Two outs, base is empty. Up the middle. Wow, that was close. Right back up the middle. Almost got him. Now with two down, they've got a man on board. Center fielder, number 51, Alex Rios. 
Well, he's having a heck of a day so far. It's his third hit of the game in this one. They just can't seem to find an answer for him. And he starts Rios out. Hit in the air. Well, you know what? Don't oh. buy the souvenirs. Wait till one comes into the stands and he gets one right there. Better than that, you get to go on TV because you made a great play. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. Well, you talk about a guy who just corkscrewed himself into the ground. Bad timing. And Soto spotting the pitch. Hit sharply towards the hole. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. One of the toughest pitches to hit in baseball. It really is the one that separates the good hitters from the mediocre hitters. He stays with the slider. It doesn't try to do too much with it. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. Flew out last time. Strike one. Wells gets him to swing on one. Well, I have to go out of the strike zone here on the 0-1 count. He tends to be very aggressive here. See if you can't get him to chase. Hot shot towards the hole. And that puts that potential tying run on base. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. What more do you need to see? Now you have to question his confidence. Giving up three straight hits. Not much going right out there at this point. And Mark T into bat. This is the time to be a hero. Team's down, but the hit right here, and you're right back in the ball game. Well, no question about that. A hit right here puts them right back in this game. It changes the whole complexion. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. It's hard to get the kind of action you want on a two-seam fastball up in the zone, but his location away caused it to be effective anyways. Throws on to first in time to retire the side. Well, they load the bases on the strength of three base hits, but no run. The Cubs still ahead. Another chance for the leadoff hitter coming up in the inning. So Giovanni Soto will lead it off. He tripled his last time up. Giovanni Soto. First one to Soto. Here's the pitch. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And it's starting to head out towards the wall. He's thinking extra bases. Soto's headed to third. And he'll stop at third with a triple. Well, I was already to mark this down on the card as a double. Put another line in there. Well, he didn't let up at all, Gary. Great effort on his part. Took a chance. But he made it. Amazing thing is he was able to do it standing up. Jeff Baker, he'll be looking to drive something in. But Gary, he struggles with runners on base, so look for them to go right at him at the plate now. Danks gets set and delivers. First pitch is a cutter. Looked at 0-1. A cut fastball just ran inside on the hitter's hands. He had no chance to even get out and swing at it. Tough pitch. The pitch hit hard on the ground towards third. And Baker set down. For the Chicago Cubs. That shielder as well. It's Soriano at the plate. He's gone two for seven lifetime off John Danks. One out with a runner at third. First pitch, here it comes. This one swung on, hit down the line and right. And it's in there. So Soriano okay. knocks in the run. The Boy, the continuation here of this offense is called big time momentum. One down, runner at first. Ontario ready, first pitch. And that swung on and hit. Rios. And that's a base hit. Terrio on board. 
Now Good offensive chance here. First baseman, number 25, Derek Lee. But one of the rare hitters in all of baseball that really struggles with that pitch right down the middle. But he got his bat on this one and managed to get a hit. Runners at first and third, one away. Danks gets set and delivers. Rios will field. And, he, and Soriano's on his way home. And Soriano comes in to score. Star hitters find ways to get big time runs driven in, and he does it in this situation. Not with a home run, not with a ball off the wall, with an out, but it's still an RBI. Runner on first now, Aramis Ramirez. And the offense here is putting on the show right now. They're in charge of this ball game. I carry that last hit just blows the door wide open right there. I mean, they got a shot at running away with this thing. And the other thing they know is they've got time and outs on their side. And that'll get him aboard. They're on a roll. Now well, he's having himself a day right here in this one. Two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. Two down. Runners at first and second. And the first pitch. There's a swing and a drive deep to left field. This one towards Pierre. And there's the third up. So they pick up four hits in the inning and two runs across. Five runs up for the Cubs. And Paul Canerco to lead it off. He doubled at his last appearance. Number 14, Paul Canerco. And he starts Canerco out. He's up for that first pitch and misses 0 and 1. Well, Gary, this guy has an outstanding slider. Such a tough pitch to hit. It almost needs a turn signal when he gets to the plate. And that strike runs the count to 0 and 2 for Wells. Well, Gary, talk about his slider. What makes it so tough to hit him is that the break on that pitch is so big and it's so hard. It's very tough on the hitter to center the ball. Rung him up. Strike three. Count that one as cake. Struck him out on three pitches. That gets it done in a hurry. Uh, efficient and in control. When you have those two things working for you, you're going to get it done. One out, nobody on. The first pitch. Taps this one foul off to the left. Swings, lines this one back up the middle. And Terrio gloves that one. And the shot here for Alexi Ramirez. Two down. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Strike one. Wells gets him to swing 0-1. Gary, he gets a little over anxious at the plate when the count goes to 0-1. So look for them maybe to expand the strike zone and get him to chase something. And it's 0-2. Alexei Ramirez going to have to protect now. Well, this one here was no doubt about it. The late break on that slider. I mean, what a devastating. There's a swing and a liner towards first. And there's Lee as he pulls it in for the third out. No scoring here ending this half inning. Cubs holding on to the lead. And if you're just joining in, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crunk bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And Hoff Power batting. Last time up, triple homer run. Well, big production in this ball game. Already driving in a couple runs and a major factor in this offense. Danks gets set and delivers towards center field. Rios will field, 
No problem for him as he gets that out. And Fukudomi batting. Well, Kosuke Fukudomi is the type of hitter that he's not going to supply you a lot of power. Only 11 home runs in 2009, 259 average. If this team has any idea of getting to the postseason, he's going to have to perform at the offensive end better than what he has in his previous two seasons with the Cubs. And here's the first one. Liner towards the hole. Beckham. Two down here in the inning. Boy, he made that throw a split second before he lost control of the body. Now, the key was he kept his eye on the target the entire time. Big smile. He got that one done. And it's Giovanni Soto. Two for three thus far. Two outs and nobody on. First one to Soto. Here's the pitch. There's a swing. Fly ball down the line and left. And Pierre grabs that one. And the side's retired. So John Danks gets some three up, three down. He's pitching deep into this one, even though he may come away with a loss. Loosen him up. Seventh inning stretch time on the south side. Quick glimpse of the manager, Ozzie Guillen. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. And here's Mark Kotze. He'll start the home half of the seventh. Wells with the pitch. Mm -mm. Chases that one. It's high, but it's a strike. Look, Gary, with this big a lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes. Get outs right now. Grounded to Ramirez. And that's a base hit. Kotze on it first. So one Pierre will come up. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Stephen, looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. He's looking a little confused out there right now. He just swung at a pitch that was in the dirt. Now Soto sets up. Fastball inside. He had to do a little dancing on that one. You have to have great command and control as a pitcher. Sometimes you throw a pitch off the plate to send a message. He threw it exactly where he wanted to in that situation. Juan Pierre misses strike three. The 82 mile per hour pitch coming in flat right there. This is a tough pitch to handle, but he takes the swings anyway. And Johnny had to do that, right? Well, it would have been a strike regardless, but sometimes you got to make the pitcher work a little bit harder out there for the good of the team. One out, runner on at first. Here's the first pitch. Strike one. Wells gets him to swing on one. Okay, one out here in the seventh inning. I mean, you have to like the way this is going. They're looking good. The pitcher's throwing strikes. The defense making plays. They've got a big lead. Everything feels good. Now here's a grounder towards the hole. And that's going to play Alex Rios. He talked about a guy who's just wearing out the opposition. That's a four hit day for him. He is locked in. And the 2009 season was a big disappointment for Alex Rios, starting out with the Toronto Blue Jays and then continuing on when he got oh. traded to the Chicago White Sox at the trade deadline. Things just didn't get better in either place. That first pitch was fouled off. It's 0 1. Or uh, Rios, just a 247 batting average last year. Nobody expected that. No, not at all. And this is a guy who's a former All Star. He, you looked at him in Toronto and you thought we can build a team around him in Toronto. It just didn't work out. And Alex Rios has struck out a big swing and a miss. Let's take another look at that pitch. It's a two-seam fastball in KK. I just don't think you can make it any easier than that. Three pitches up, down. See you later. He's already back at the bench. Two men on and two men out. First pitch to Quinton. Strike one. Wells gets him to swing on one. Well, it's getting late right now. Two outs here in the seventh inning, and 
you know, they're down by a bunch of runs. They need to start to get something going right here, Gary. Strike two, now with no balls, two strikes. Quinton needs to protect that strike zone. Well, that's a pretty good pitch right there. He got that slider in the strike zone. He got the hitter out in front to swing early. Hit hard on the ground to short. Throw over to second base, a force to retire the side. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. In Cup six, the White Sox won. Jeff Baker leading it off. Grounded out his last time up. Number 28, Jeff Baker. And the first pitch. That one is hit well. Quentin's there. That one's caught. Well, this is why you swing the outfielders around to right field. That's where his strength is. That's where he hits it. That's where he did hit it. It's an out. Nobody on base. One away. Danks gets set and delivers. Starts him out with a cut fastball for a strike. Uh, nobody on base right now with one out, and that's what you need. You need outs and maybe a break from base runners for a little bit here. How about a quick inning to get back in and score some runs? Towards center field. And the catch by Rios. Two away. Well, Gary, you know, he's settling into a groove right here. And that's six in a row that he set down. Base is empty and two down. Ontario ready. First pitch. That ball swung on, hit. Rios to field it. And in there, at least for a single as it gets down. That will bring Derek Lee up. And that is 15 hits this pitcher surrendered. What did he do to the manager to cause this much trouble? A runner on first with two outs. Danks gets set and delivers. Oh. First pitch is a slider low, 1-0. Oh. Well, he took a look at ball one, and I think right now his tendency is to not swing at this pitch either. I think you've got to throw him a strike right now. And Lee swings and misses at that. That evens up the count. Two outs in this inning, but a man on first base. And Gary, you know, they, they've just got to find a way to get it out. Get a ground ball, get the force out at second. Get in there and see if he can't score some runs. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. Well, you see another good John Danks performance in that inning. Now time for the White Sox. This is their chance in the home half of the eighth. Middle of the lineup, due up. A glimpse there, Lou Pinello. He has to be pleased with his team's performance so far today. Mark Tien. And Mark Tien to bat. He'll start things off, bottom half, eighth inning. Wells with the pitch. Line drive. That's foul towards first. Here's the delivery. And that's a strike. Mark Tian's going to have to take very close approach on the next one. Well, it's getting late right now. They're down a bunch, so they need a big inning here. They can't wait till the ninth to try to come all the way back. They need to try to do something now. Got him there. That was a nice strikeout. Now, K Cam's going to show us a good look of this slider. Fantastic piece of pitching to get that out, John. Well, that's the part of pitching you love. He's looking for a fastball. He's expecting a fastball. And then just drop one right off the table. What a pitch. And he starts Canerco out. Wow, Wells fooled him on that one. Well, Paul Canerco just put together another solid season. He's never going to be a guy that hits for a great average, 265, but he's a run producer in the middle of that lineup. 28 home runs, 88 RBIs in 152 games. 
Oh one the count right now after he fouled off that first one. Canerco certainly one of those players you look at as far as your offense is concerned and combined. Swing and a miss gets away. He's heading for first. He gets the throw down to first base and they'll get the up. That's a great play there by the catcher. When the pitcher throws one in the dirt like that, he's really hoping the catcher will block it, keep it in front, and be able to get the out at first. Kind of plays that can change the momentum of a game if you don't get that out. Two outs, base is empty. Wells with the pitch. This one's grounded near third. Foul. Here's a swing and a fly ball. It is foul. Got him. Ninth strikeout of the game. Nobody left on base. No runs or hits here in this half inning. Cubs still on top. Taking account of the ball game, there's Ozzie Guillen. Trying to feel what he's thinking right now. It's a very tough game. Uh, maybe, maybe thinking about some adjustments as we move forward. And the Ramos Ramirez up. He's going to start the ninth inning. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. He's been chosen to take over out there. Well, it's about time. I mean, I don't know what they weren't seeing from the dugout. They should have gotten out of this game a lot earlier. And Ramirez settles in first pitch to right center and it's through into the gap should be extra bases. It rolls all the way to the wall. Ramirez is headed for third and he pulls into second base. That will be a double right fielder number 22 Marlon Bird. Well, they just can't figure out a way to get this guy out. That's now four hits for him in this game. And we've got Bird batting. Second lifetime AB looking to go one for two with a hit off Bobby Jenks. First pitch to him. Well hit towards the middle. Fielded by Ramirez. Too late and he is safe at second. The Cubs in a nice position to capitalize. Micah. Well, the pitcher did everything he could right here. He got the ground ball like he wanted. But you see this runner, man, once he left the box, he is flying and he beats this one out. No one out yet. Runners at first and second. Here's the first pitch. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. One away. Runner on seconds go stay right there. One away. They had the outfield swung around to the right that time. He had a long way to go to run that one down. Guske will get the RBI chance. Ground out victim last time through. One out with runners at first and second. Jenks with a delivery. Line drive left of the bag and foul. He delivers a smash towards the hole. This is placed perfectly for a base hit. Boy, what a time now to capitalize if they can. A real pressure mounting right now. That base hit loads up the bases. He's going to have to make a pitch to try to get out of this mess. Bases are loaded here with only one away.
First one to Soto. Here's the pitch. Swing and a drive. Deep left center. Ramirez around third. Headed for the plate. And Ramirez is home. Solid approach at the plate. Got a pitch that he could do something with it. That he could handle. And he picks up an RBI. Good job. Two down. Runners at first and second. That ball swung on, hit Rios to field it. And that one's put away to retire the side. So they scratch across a run, three hits and a couple left on. Cubs continue to run away with this one. There's a familiar face, Lou Pinello looking on. He has to be very pleased right now riding this one up. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off, wearing the collar thus far. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. And this is inside. That got him pretty good. Well, that's not where he wanted to throw that fastball. Gets away from him. That hurts. Let's see if he rubs it going down the base. That'll bring up Mark Kotze. A runner on first, no out. Here's the first pitch to Kotze. Strike one. Wells gets him to swing on one. Well, a non-save situation right here in the ninth inning. And they just want to get outs right now. Try to get the first out of the inning. Take away oh. hope as the other team needs to score a bunch of runs. You get an out, you can really deflate them. Strikeout number 10 today. I don't know how his arm's going to feel after the game. It's an awful lot of sliders, but it's obviously working. It's his 10th strikeout on the bender. One down, runner at first. And Pierre ready for the first pitch. Swing, soft liner towards left center. And it's through. Credit Pierre, a single. Ramirez is headed for third. Steve, sometimes that pitch down the middle you want to drive, he chose to take it the other way. Oh, good piece of hitting. You don't have to always pull that ball. You think up the middle at first and then adjust accordingly. Outstanding adjustment. The pitch. Taps this one foul to the right. Struck him out. That's going to be 11 in the game. Well, you like to see your pitcher strike guys out. You like to see him keep the pitch count down. He did both. Big smile in the dugout over there. That's a domination in that effort by the pitcher. And he starts Rios out. Head on the ground. This could be the end of this ball game. He's and out. on to first for out number three. And that's going to do it. A tough loss here for this crowd today. But boy, do they see some, some kind of pitching performance from the visiting team. And we take a look at our Pepsi Clutch performer delivering the goods for the club today. Tigabato working effectively. Today, it was Randy Wells. Well, you know, Gary, you look at the ball strike ratio today, and it's just outstanding what this young man did. And managers love it when their pitchers are throwing strikes, but also fielders do, because you know that any chance you have, the ball's put in play. Problem is, this team didn't put many in play. Struck out over 10 hitters in this game, but it does keep your team fresh and your head's in the game. Great job. When you take to the road, Steve, any win will do. But when you get this kind of offense, it's very satisfying. Well, it also sends a message to your club and to that club that you showed up to play. And that's going to do it for us here. For Steve Phillips, John Crock, I'm Gary Thorne. Take care.